Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to read some promises of God so you can be encouraged. God's promises. I start with love for God, which also shows you what that means. Mark chapter 12 verses 29 to 31. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Matthew chapter 22 verse 37. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It's the same command. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 20. Love the Lord your God Listen to his voice and hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life. The Lord is your life. Get hold of that and you will have everything. So, Psalm chapter 31 verse 23. Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the proud it pays back in full. He preserves the faithful. He preserves you. He keeps you healthy, young, active. He preserves you. The condition is there. Love the Lord, all his saints. You have to love the Lord first. He will preserve you. But proud, mm, uh -uh. But the proud he pays back in full. God says, I set my face against the proud. People who are proud, that they think they are somebody, they are something, that they can do it with their own strength. They can do anything they want with their own strength, with their own power, with their own wealth, with their own fame, with their own name. God says, I am against you. I'll pay you back in full. There is nothing wrong with being rich. There is nothing wrong with being famous and powerful and have wisdom. But if your trust is not in the Lord, but in your wealth, then that is your problem. That is where the pride comes and that is where the fall comes. The fall comes after pride. 1 John chapter 2 verse 3. This is love for God, to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. That's so simple. This is love for God, that you obey his commands, which are not burdensome. They're not heavy. Jesus says, carry my cross and take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's light. People don't read the, the latter part of the scripture where, where Jesus says, my burden is light, my yoke is easy. All you have to do is just to follow me and do what I've told you, that command, that burden, that cross is not burdensome. That yoke is not burdensome, it's not heavy. John chapter 14 verse 21 Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. Well, that, there you go. Then that, That's the condition fulfilled. If you have obeyed his commands or you are obeying his commands, then you love him. It's a clear indication that you love the Lord. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, 
and I too will love him and show myself to him. I will reveal myself to him who loves me. And my father will love him too. These are the condition. The condition is that you obey his commands. John chapter 14 verse 23. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. It's a similar message. If you love and obey Jesus and his command, his teaching, Jesus is promising that both his Father, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus will come to you and make their home with you and live with you. Psalm chapter 91, verse 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. Just because you acknowledge his name, isn't that wonderful that God rescues you? You call upon his name and he saves you. Whoever calls on his name shall be saved. You just call on his name for his name's sake. He says, I will rescue you, I will protect you. You know the equipment that you buy, television set, microwave, the washing machine, the cooker, the oven. They have their own logo and they have their own brand and they have their own warranty. If anything happens with them, if anything goes wrong with them, you can send it back to the supplier, to the manufacturer at their cost and they will repair it at their cost and they will send it back to you at their cost all that because of what because of their name not because of you they don't love you they don't care about you they don't even know you but they do all that because of their name if this is how much we who are evil care about our name our honor our respect and we don't want to be dishonored in the society, especially in this day and age, where everything can just fly in one second from one end of the world to the other. How much more our Heavenly Father cares about His name and His reputation. He rescues you, He preserves you, He says, and He protects you because of His name only because we acknowledge him and call upon him. Hallelujah. Love for others. We read in James chapter 2 verse 8, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19 We love because he first loved us. We don't love him, we don't love others, and we don't love God because we are so wonderful. No, we love God and we love others because he loved us first. He came and he died for us while we were still sinners. And because we acknowledge that, because we recognize that, we love him because he died for us. And we love others so much to give them the same message, the gospel, the good news, that Jesus came and died for our sins. And that way he saves us if you only believe him and believe in his sacrifice. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 Dear friends, 
Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Everyone who loves has come from God. Love comes from God. The pure love that the Bible is teaching, that unconditional love that the Bible is teaching comes from God. Not from us, not from the world, not from anywhere else, from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. So if you have that, that is a clear indication you've been born of God. And you know God. I have a separate video on love. You need to watch that message that I have on love, uh, which I have said many times it has been misinterpreted and misunderstood over and over throughout the centuries in the Christian world. And I've got the message there, which will be surprising to the majority of those who haven't heard my message. Uh, I, I recommend you listen to that, watch that message on love that gives you a clear idea of what love is and what we are supposed to do with it as far as God and the Word of God are concerned. So the, the love that the Bible and Scripture is teaching us, God is teaching us, Jesus is teaching us, is nothing anywhere, nothing to do with the love that we have been taught in our schooling system, in our even churches, majority of churches I'm talking about, not, not every church, and by preachers, uh, pastors, teachers, the world system, the media, the love, the unconditional love that God is teaching us cannot be any further away from what the world is teaching us. So make sure you watch that message, clarify the definition of love in your head, then you understand what we're talking about, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Matthew chapter 3 verses 44 and 45 I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Pray for those who persecute you. It's not easy. And love your enemies. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them. Pray for them that they will understand and know Christ and the message of the cross, salvation. Pray and bless them by giving them the message of Christ so that they might be saved. Their soul might be saved and they might let you go and leave you alone. They might leave you alone. But your motive shouldn't be that they would leave you alone. Their, your intention should be that they will receive salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ and they will be saved. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 9. He who covers over an offense promotes love, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Now, if you cover an offense, you have a friend, you have a relative, you have a family member who has done an offense, you keep repeating that, you keep bringing it up, you keep resurrecting it, you keep bringing that up to their face and keep repeating the, the offense to them, just, con just to condemn them, just so that you feel better, or for any other motives or intentions that you may have. You're not doing any good. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17 verse 9, we just read, 
If you cover an offense, you promote love. You show your forgiveness, you show your love. But if you repeat the matter, you're separating close friends. That is how you're separating close friends. Close friends, family members, relatives, anybody. You keep repeating it. Forget about it. Cover it. You shouldn't even talk to others about that. When you do that, that person will find out sooner or later and will know that you're not really showing any love. You don't love that person. You're, act you're not acting in love. You have a malicious intention. This is not good. This is not from God. If you were born of God, you would have loved, you would have had that love to forgive and let go and cover over the offense and not repeating it, keep bringing it up. That doesn't do anyone any good, doesn't do you any good. You're the first person to get hurt, not that other person will forget about you, cut off with you for the rest of his life or her life, but you will be hurt more than they will. Let bygones be bygones. Something is done, somebody has done something wrong, all right, they have done it wrong, whether they admit it or not, who is the mature one here? If you are the mature one, if you are the spiritual, which you claim to be, or you think you are, why are you repeating the offense? Why do you keep saying that they've done this, they've done that? If you keep saying that, that means you're not so mature. That means you haven't forgiven them. That means you don't love them. Love your neighbors as yourself. You don't love yourself, even. Think about that. This is important. This is very powerful. We just read these proverbs. You just think this is a poem. And it's not just a poem. It's not just a proverb. These are examples for us to teach us. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1. Keep on loving each other as brothers. You have to love each other as brothers. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. Now about brotherly love. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. It's urging them to do more and more loving each other. Although they already love and they've already been taught by God. And that's another message. You are taught by God. Jesus says himself that you won't need a teacher to teach you the word of God, to teach you about God, because he is sending us the counselor, he calls. The Holy Spirit will come and teach us everything. The Holy Spirit has come and is teaching us everything we need in our lives. You need to receive that Holy Spirit though. If you haven't been filled or you haven't received the Holy Spirit in your life, then you need to, and I urge you, to receive the Holy Spirit in your life. Be saved first. Repent of your sins. Be saved and receive the Holy Spirit in your life. And then you will have power over sin. You will have power and knowledge to know what is right, what is good, and what is the will of God for you in your life. 1 John chapter 2 verse 10 Whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. There is nothing in him to make him stumble if you love your brother. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 There is no fear in love but perfect love drives out 
fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The fear has to do with punishment. The fear has to do with punishment of sin. You're not perfect. You haven't received that love. You're not perfect in love. Promises of God, again, on love of God. Psalm chapter 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Psalm chapter 107, verses 8 and 9. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Not bad things, good things. Give thanks. That is, again, the condition is there. Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken, and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. That's the promise of God. His love for you will never be shaken, nor be removed. His love for you is an eternal love, an unfailing love. His love for you will never be shaken and his covenant of peace shall never be removed. He has compassion on us all. Psalm chapter 103 verse 17. From everlasting to everlasting the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. It's a promise for you and your children's children. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with you, with those who fear him. Fear, the Bible says, not fear of the persecution, not fear of the people, not fear of what the world thinks of you, but fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Just think about that one. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom just the beginning Hosea chapter 2 verses 19 and 20 I will betroth you to me forever I will betroth you in righteousness and justice in love and compassion I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace I have been saved. It is only by grace that you can ever be saved. Anybody can ever be saved. It is not by your works. It is not by your good deeds. It is by grace. It is God's free gift of love and sacrifice and mercy. His grace is sufficient. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. 
They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Great is your faithfulness. Because his love and his compassions never fail. If it wasn't for God's love, we would be consumed with fire. It's only because of God's love that we're not and we will not be. We will not be consumed by fire, by his wrath, because of his love. Not because of our good deeds, not because of how wonderful we are, or we think we are, anyway. But because of his love, 